Welcome to the Holly Hibbard Leadership Podcast, your go-to source for actionable insights, practical advice, and inspiring stories to help you lead with faith-filled purpose at work and at home. If you're looking to equip, empower, and encourage yourself to thrive in an ever-changing world, you're in the right place. I'm Holly Hibbard, and with over 20 years of experience as a science teacher, leadership coach, entrepreneur, and relationship mentor, I understand the challenges and growth opportunities that come with pursuing your passion. Whether you're chasing career goals, taking entrepreneurial leaps, or finally reaching for those long postponed ambitions, I'm here to help. So let's get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations and explore ways you can lead your family, lead your life, and find your calling with intention and faith. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I thought I would dive today into the topic of leadership by defining what is a leader anyway. And more specifically, is everyone meant to lead? Now, full disclosure, this topic is inspired because I was thinking about what people commonly do Google searches about when it comes to being a great leader. And this question popped up of, is everyone meant to be a leader? Or can someone learn how to be a better leader? I can say from my own experience over many years now that, yes, I feel for me personally, I've become improved in my leadership. And I think the first ingredient to improving in how you lead people is, are you committed to improving how you are being with people, how you communicate with people, how you act with others, but also how do you take care of yourself? I had a mentor once say to myself and other transformational leadership training facilitators, He said to all of us, you are thoroughbreds. (laughs) You have to treat yourself like a thoroughbred. You have to consider the type of mindset that you are in. You have got to ensure that you are physically and mentally and emotionally taking care of yourself so that you are prepared to lead other people by being a vessel, by being a clean empty space in a way so that those people can be in our presence or in my case in my presence and feel comfortable being themselves. If I as a leader am not committed to sorting out my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own physical things, then what happens is that clouds my judgment. And with cloudy judgment, my ability to discern, my ability to communicate, my ability to strategize, my ability to collaborate with others is also muddied and it's less efficient, it's less effective. And so I feel, yeah, anyone can learn to lead in some capacity, but the first and foremost thing that needs to be present is the commitment to improving oneself. And I think the mistake happens when we have people who think they're great leaders look around at the persons that report to them, let's say, and when they think about how they can improve their management or improve their leadership, the first thing they think about is how do I make them better instead of first going to how can I improve myself? How can I ensure that I am a clear vessel or a clean vessel, clean-minded, clear-headed, where I'm able to use every ounce of energy and intelligence and whatever skill God's given me to support these people in doing the thing that they are meant to do in their role? And by support, it doesn't necessarily mean hands-on, but I've got to be able to uplift others, to encourage others. And I said this in a video I recorded yesterday, to encourage someone or to empower something means that you are loaning, really, your courage or your experience of power to people so that they can then be a better version of themselves. So again, if my commitment is to being a better leader, I've got to be committed to getting myself in that thoroughbred state, right? And 
noticing how I can improve my skills, yes, but first and foremost, how I'm being, how I'm feeling in mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. So let's go to point number two about is everyone meant to lead? People who are meant to lead have a desire to improve the tactics of leadership as well. Leaders need to be, in some sense, strategic. They need to have an ability to set priorities and understand a timeline and then manage that time. Now, what's interesting is we have so many people, we go to like a left brain, right brain concept. We've got people who are leaning more toward the creative side. They're excellent in brainstorming, collaborating, seeing all these ideas that can come together. And the creative side may have better success as a leader because they can see the big picture. They can see the whole painting and what the entire landscape is going to look like. And for those folks, they might have an easier time managing at a macro level, giving people permission to go and handle the details because they can see the big picture and they have a level of trust that the people that they are superior to, I hate that word, (laughs) the people that are reporting to them, that's better, um, have the ability to get into the nitty gritty details and handle the small stuff, but the leader there will see that it all comes together. However, on the flip side, not negative or bad or wrong, you also have leaders who are more analytical minded as opposed to the creative mind. And the persons who are more analytical minded are going to get into the weeds of details, because it's not just weeds in the details, the success is in the details too. There's this ability to be so granular with the strategy. What will be every little move that's going to be made to have this thing happen? And it can be really difficult sometimes because those persons are so focused on getting every single small detail exactly correct that they may obsess about something and other people may think, man, why can't you just zoom out for a second and look at the big picture? You're getting a little bit, uh, a little too detailed, a little too micromanagey here. So a leader, and now that doesn't mean that the creative leader, by the way, doesn't have an issue because the creative leader also could be so focused on the big picture, the whole landscape, that they might miss a detail or 20, they may forget to delegate something to someone and throw the entire timeline off. So there is a sweet spot in all of this. Naturally, I mean, I think hopefully it's obvious that if we can tap into both our strengths on our creative side and our strengths on our analytical side, then as a leader, we're going to be looking at both the big picture and the details. But the fluidity is the most important. Can I as a leader know when I need to zoom out, see the big picture, and trust my team to do the things that I've hired them to do? That is an incredible relationship that can happen there when the team members, when the colleagues feel trusted that they're being relied on to get their portion of this big thing done. And on the flip side, I can keep that big picture perspective with the creative leadership side, but know that if something goes down or a detail gets missed, I might need to zoom in all the way to one detail or two for an extended period of time to ensure that that one thing doesn't have the entire project unravel. So fluidity to me is an ability to be able to go back and forth between creative leadership and analytical leadership and know that both are needed. And if that's not in one person, this may look like people who are in different parts of a leadership team. So I tend to, I can be in the fluid side, but I will tell you that I'm probably 75% creative and 25% analytical. 
So it really requires effort of me to be balanced in the middle. But if I were to bring on someone to co-lead something with me or teach something with me, for example, I love when that person shows up and they're the super analytical nitty gritty person because that means that my creative side can just flow and come up with all these different ideas and think outside the box. And that makes me a better leader because I'm in the presence of someone who's a great leader on the other side of these thought processes and vice versa. A person who is super analytical might say, man, I I know my team wants to make things a little more fluid, have a little more flow, more trust, more creativity, more fun, happier. (laughs) I don't know. And they might notice I'm stressing about the small stuff and I don't want to. Well, that's where they can bring in someone who does have that creative style of leadership and they complement one another. And this doesn't have to be just at a leadership role or a leadership position. The entire purpose of this podcast is to give you practical ways and things to think about that will improve your skills as a leader, yes, perhaps in your career, And yes, definitely in how to manage yourself, manage your emotions, have that self-awareness, lead your own life. But also, how does this play out in our friendships? How does this play out in our relationships? I can tell you right now, for certain, my husband and I, in certain areas of our hobbies or things that need to be handled, We work really well because I am super creative and can think outside the box very quickly and come up with new ideas. And when something needs to be very much in the details, he plans things and almost doesn't forget anything. It's pretty cool. But then we can change gears to another area like decorating our home or fixing up the house, for example. And when it comes to that, oh my goodness, he has this eye, this creative eye where he can just see the potential in things and he places things in a way that I'm thinking, gosh, this looks like a professional did this. I don't work like that. My creativity doesn't come out in that way. I am an idea generator. He is an idea integrator. But he also can come up with it and then integrate it and make it happen. So we are different in different arenas of even our home life. And even in the way that we are with our daughter, same thing. There are certain things that mom is better at teaching her than dad is and that dad is better at teaching her than mom is for different reasons. Because one of us is going to get super detailed and that works and it's needed. And the other person is going to be very creative and very outside the box and go with the flow. And sometimes that is needed. So can everyone lead? Yes, if your commitment is to be a leader in some capacity of your home, of your own life, in your career, etc. Yes, you can do it. But you've got to have, number one, that commitment to working on you. Knowing where are you good at strategizing? Where are you great and not so great at prioritizing and managing your time? Where do you feel really self-aware and what are you less likely to notice about your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, your physical body? Because if you're not willing to practice being self-aware, that is going to impact your ability to lead or not. Can you negotiate? Do you even know what that means? (laughs) I should do a whole episode on what is negotiating. Can you evoke the best from people? Do you have a mission to pull the greatness out of people in your family, to pull that greatness out of your friends, to point out to people not only where they're making mistakes, but point out something they did so well that it impresses you even just a little bit or made you jealous even or envious just a little bit because you're like, man, I wish I could do that that well. And then you build that up in them. Leadership is not only about delegating and telling people what to do. 
There is relationship here. There is a back and forth here. But it requires your commitment to yourself as a thoroughbred and it requires your commitment to your continuous growth and a commitment to you learning how to grow the people in your life as well. To water them, to keep planting seeds of goodness and compassion and building them up, encouragement, empowerment, loaning what you have to them in that way. And if that's all the case for you, then yeah, you're meant to be a leader. And if you're listening to this and you think, that sounds like a lot of work, or if you're listening to this and you're thinking about people that you have followed in your life because they were either your leader in your life in some way or they were your boss or what have you, maybe you're thinking, gosh, they were never meant to lead. And maybe they weren't, or maybe just not then. Maybe they once had that certain something and along the way, someone stopped empowering them and they stopped committing to being that thoroughbred in leadership. I hope this was insightful. I would love to hear from you about your strength as a leader. Which of any of those assets do you feel you embody easily? The creative side, the analytical side, strategizing, managing time, self-awareness, bringing the best out of people. I would love to hear from you. Drop me a comment, share something. And thank you again for sharing the show. And until next time, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. I'm high-fiving you right now because I'm so proud of you for putting your personal growth first. Remember, I believe in you. And with faith-filled intention and committed actions, you can lead your life purpose and family to wherever you dream possible. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you'd take 30 seconds to help others discover the show. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, share the show with your friends and family, or screenshot this episode to your Instagram stories and tag me at the Holly Hibbard. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. I'm always here cheering you on. And until next time, stay curious, remain encouraged, and keep empowering yourself. You're doing better than you think, I promise.